Good afternoon, everyone. This is Christian with PerfectStockAlert.com, a 100% free service for smart investors and traders. All we ask in return, please refer a friend. Today is Friday, April the 12th, 2013, and as we do every Friday, we're going over all the major markets we track for you at PerfectStockAlert.com on 19, so that you know everything that I know moving into the week ahead. The problem is, I uh, probably can't um, convince you, and I'll explain that in a minute, but the, the reality is, your market has just crashed and you don't even know it. That's a major point that I want you to get from this video. This is probably the most important video you'll watch all year long. Um, and unless I get to another one down the road when we at the bottom of the crash, I tell you it's time to start looking for buying value. Right now, if I could tell anybody anything, if I were to talk to my grandmother, whoever, I would say get out. Just get out. Um, and I'm going to show you why. Looking at the Australian market right now, you can see we've been bearish on this uh, for a while. We look at the short-term chart here, three uh, three-month daily chart here, and there's a couple of different things to talk about. We've had this massive rally when we broke down, started making lower lows and lower highs, and we're finding resistance at this 50-period moving average. We sell off from that point. No hammer candles if we get a bounce, so we know this is not a true bottom. We get this bounce. We're just looking for a new entry opportunity. If you're not already short, it's where you start looking for short opportunities because you're up here and you're trading near the 50-period moving average. This is what we're going to be watching. If I start to see a shooting star signal, another one like this, then you get a, a great sell signal. If we get confirmation there, you take that as a sell, tight stop off the top here. Uh, all this is very important. I've advanced the stop up to here because we can still bounce around a little bit more, um, but this is where you want to be selling. How overbought are you? It's substantially. Uh, the main thing I want you to think about is a bear market. In a bear market, which is what you're fixing to go into, uh, you look for um, anything trading above the 200 uh, period moving average, 200 daily moving average there, as being uh, overextended, overbought, and it's something that you're going to find that you're going to start finding resistance at the 200 day moving average. Right now, you're finding resistance at the 50 day. This is the best entry opportunities for short because it's the start of a bear, a bear market, and so the best entry opportunities will be at the 50 day, 50 day moving average. And then it'll get later on where you won't see that. You'll start seeing resistance at the 200 day. So, where is the 200 day moving average of 4596? So, where are you at right now? Well, we're at 50. Uh, 5,000. So you can see that we have a long way to the downside. We're way, way overbought. And I'll get to the point of how, how I know this in a minute. But right now, just remember, uh, sell. The U.S. markets, uh, for the most part of them, are the only ones fighting this downtrend. Uh, everything else I'm going to show you will be in a downtrend except for Jap uh, Japan. We'll get to that in a minute. And, and then we have the U.S. just is just going up. And everybody keeps saying the same thing. Well, it's the Fed, the Fed, the Fed. The, the Fed's the one driving the markets. So let me explain how this works. The Fed buys bonds, okay? When they buy bonds, they put buy pressure on bonds. Bonds go higher, yield goes lower. This forces people who want to get a, a good, decent yield to go look for it somewhere else. So you and I and everybody, we run off and we go look for it, leaving our bank accounts and leaving the bond market. We go into the equity market because they're just going up because you and I are putting our money in that's going up, right? We're making money and we're all happy and everything's great. The problem is that's not a direct um correlation, you don't have the Fed buying stocks. The Fed is forcing you or motivating you, I should say, uh, to go buy stocks. But you will only do that as long as you feel secure. The moment you no longer feel secure, you start to um, think maybe the, the top is in or something like that, you'll start selling. Doesn't matter what the Fed does buying bonds, you'll start selling. So once you have panic and, and so forth and so on happen, uh, the, the selling in the stock market will go down no problem. So don't think that because the Fed's buying bonds that the stocks can't fall. It doesn't work that way. So it's important that you take note that this market is in fact rising higher. However, uh, it's about to collapse. And uh, again, I will show you in a moment why. And one more thing I want to point out. Okay, this is a, a chart that was sent from uh, Jose Bernardo. Uh, follows us on Facebook and the PurposeDoctor.com page there. He sent me this uh, last night showing me the, the uh, April, uh, May uh, peak pattern that we see in the markets all the time. You have the April, May time period when we can get the peak and we sell off. And this happens for years. You can see this going back in the 2010 time period and then the 2011 and, and, and here we are 2012 and then now we're setting up for the 2013. So um, what everybody's looking at this, and this is an old, old adage in the stock market. One of the first things I ever learned when I first tra trading about 10 years ago was selling man go away. Everybody knows this. Uh, the problem is everybody knows that. Uh, so it's important that you get ahead of the curve. Don't wait for the uh, thing to start selling off before you say, okay, now I'm going to sell because it could happen in less than 72 hours. And I'll again point that out to you in a moment. But the main thing is I do not want you thinking that, oh, we have more time. It's not, it's not May yet. So, you know, it's, it's only roughly the middle of April. We have plenty of time. Don't do that to yourself. You're going to get caught with your pants down. 
Looking again at the Dow Jones Industrial Average the three month daily chart, you can see that I've attempted to call it top here. We got stopped out and started made a move higher. We now have a hanging man candlestick formation here. I could attempt to do it again, but I'm not going to. I'm going to wait, start to get a little bit of selling, and then I'll start selling here. But I'm not long this market, and I wouldn't need, wouldn't do that. Uh, I don't care uh, how strong you are about, oh, yeah, I'm certain this market's just going to keep going higher just because the Fed's, in. yeah, it's, it's about to fall part in your face and again I'll show you why main thing here same conditions overbought condition here on the ultimate non setter goes to this point then it goes to this point we're trending down the corresponding time period on price activity shows a high close here and we start trending higher and this is indicating a bearish divergence not sustainable it's going to fall apart but wait we got more you go to this high point here and this high point goes back to here so all of this right here you can line that up right is also a bearish divergence and so all of this is actually a BS and going to fall apart. Actually, I take it a step further. Remember, the uh, moving average, 200 day moving average in the bear market, you'll find resistance down there. You'll be trading below that. That's what's um, called a bear market. And that's at 13.4 something, for, uh, basically 1,400 points from where we're at right now. So we have to fall uh, substantially just to get in line where now you've got more sell opportunities to you oversold below the uh, 200 day uh, moving average. So you are so overbought. It's not even funny. The French CAC 40 index, this one I'm taking a short position on, and you can see the mark by the blue arrow here indicating this is where I would sell. And the reason for that is that this little bounce right here is nothing more than a bounce. We're actually going to roll over like we're doing now and start to go low. We're taking out this low here, and remember the uh, 200 period moving average is 3541. Okay, so you're, still, you're at 37, so you're not even getting into, you haven't woken up yet to the fact that you're going into a bear market. The Milan index or the MIB, this is something we talked about last week. We told you we were seeing signs here on the MIB a week ago that were that was indicating that you're seeing a bear market here and they're picking up on that and they're signaling it on this chart. And that was the fact that you came up here, uh, you, you broke down, started closing below the 50 period moving average and started finding resistance at that point, getting sell signals here. Then intraday repeated the process, sold off again. And well, all we're doing is making lower series of highs, lower series of lows. And this is in a downtrend, no argument here. But then we get down here and we start closing below the 50 period, I mean the 200 period moving average, finding resistance at that point, attempting to bounce above, getting knocked back down below it, getting sell signals at the base or support line. You'll learn about that later. And then this little bounce here that we talked about back when it was uh, starting to happen, we told you we look for that bounce to be finding resistance at the previous point of resistance, also at the 50 period moving average, where you find your best entry opportunities on the short side. And now you're going to come down here. What are you going to do? You're going to close below this 50 period moving average. When this continues to develop, you're going to see this little red line here, 50 day moving average, actually cross below the 200 day moving average, meaning everything at the 200 day moving average is going to be over, over bought. So all of this was overbought. You're seeing this is more of a advanced chart for where your U.S. markets are and so forth and so on, but your U.S. markets are going to be following this pattern. So what you see here is this is going to cross below the 200-day moving average, and then you'll start looking again for great entry opportunities on the short side at the 50. Well, the 50 would then at that point be below the 200. So anything above the 200 point right now is just a joke, right? That's important. Again, I would take a position on this here. I've marked on the chart. And again, all these charts are kept on the free website at perfectstockalert.com. You can see my annotations, where my stop loss limit is, and so forth and so on there. Again, I want to point out on this particular chart, uh, you'll notice this bounce here brought you up there to the 70 period moving average and you're starting to roll over away from that point here. Same time period you had back here before you crash down again. So everything's in line that says this is where you should be selling at this market. The German DAX composite, this is one we've been watching, talked about last week, told you that the, the actual, uh, what we're looking for here is an entry opportunity on the short side. We want to do that at or above, uh, above the 50, I mean the 50 day moving average is the best entry opportunity on the short side there and we're going into a downtrend and then we've had the opportunity to bounce here, just rolled over and started moving lower again. We have the stop set off the previous high here. Um, multiple reasons for that. One, we don't want to get stopped out uh, really early on little fluctuations and little bounces here and there. Uh, but you'll notice a bigger picture here. You have this shoulder formation here, this head formation here, and then this shoulder comes up here. Roughly the same size, the same level that you were here. This again, all very bearish, tells you to look for this little neckline right here to be, actually I should redraw that and make sure I do it right here. I don't want to give you guys subpar analysis, okay? Here we got this little shoulder, pulls back down to low close would be roughly here, maybe here. And then we come up here and we pull back here and then always use the closes and then come up here to roughly the same level. So now we can draw a neckline from this low close here to this low close here and we simply draw that out like so. And now when we watch this price activity come down here and close below this neckline here at that point, it'll be confirming the head and shoulders formation. It won't just be a potential one, but it'll be confirmed. At that time, you can take the high close point here and 
and do the math from that high point down to the neckline here. Do that math, subtract that from the breakout point, gives you an idea of where you're going. What is that telling you? It tells you look for the 200 day moving average price to be at that level, 73 of 48. We're at 77 of 44, so several hundred points to the downside there. Uh, again, well over extended, and again, this is just getting started. Want more a reason to believe what I'm saying, that we're going to be falling below the 200-day moving average? Well, just look at gold. Here you have what I was talking about on the, on the MIB was going to develop. You've already seen it develop on the gold chart. You can see the 50-day uh, moving average cross below. I'm giving you the bearish cross below the 200-day uh, moving average. And then how far away from the 200-day moving average are you trading? Well away from that point. So you are so overbought in your other markets. It's unbelievable. And again, I will show it to you in just a moment. Right now, if you're already short gold, that's the way to be. Uh, I talked about this last week. Told you that we drew these lines out here so you could see that the bounds that we were getting um, last week, right here, was something you wouldn't look for a short opportunity. I didn't take it because I didn't get a really clear uh, shooting star signal, which I like to see. We don't always get that, and so in this particular case, I just missed it. If you caught it, and great for you, uh, continue to uh, trade that to the downside, obviously. Uh, and again, use your bounces as short opportunities, not buy entry opportunities. And do not attempt to call bottoms in a falling knife scenario. When you're in a downtrend like this, where you've got lower series of highs, lower series of lows, you do not attempt to call a bottom. You let it fall and you short and you bounce. Looking now at the Hong Kong Hang Seng in Index, this is again about 600 points to the downside just before you get to the 200 day moving average at 21,438. You're at 22,089. Uh, so again, this is just another bounce short opportunity overall downtrend clearly defined once we get below the 50 period moving average you close below that you start to find resistance at that level shooting stars a great entry opportunity there That's where my stop is set right now on this new uh, place that I would be looking at You can still bounce around a little bit and get up here to this 50 period moving average But that all depends on whether or not the news gets out uh, in front of everybody fast enough So I would start looking for a short here if you get more great I, I Legging even more, but my stop is way up here. And this is a very good chart showing you what's going to be happening to your U.S. markets. Everybody was happy moving to the upside. Uh, the uh, slope or the angle of the 50 period moving average is nice enough, and then it starts to just kind of go sideways, and then we go the other direction. Where are we headed? The 200 day moving average. And what's going to happen down there? You're going to see the 50 cross below the 200. So everything above the 200 is just complete hot air. It's going to go falling apart. You are entering a bear market. You are, I would say, you're already in it. You just don't know. Looking now at the BSE, or the India Bombay Stock Exchange. This is another one just like the MIB that we talked about in Milan Index, where we were seeing sell signs at the 200-day moving average, resistance at the 200-day moving average. This is nowhere near indicating, well, we just overshot to the downside. We're turning around. We're going to get bullish now. No, you're not. You're picking up signs on these charts. These peripheral charts are telling you there's a big problem here. And this is something we talked about last week. I told you we didn't really know what the problem was. We didn't know what the catalyst was going to be. Uh, I anticipated it would be Europe, but I didn't really have the, the proof just yet. Well, now I do. In this particular chart, I'm not going to be selling it. I've got other positions already on the table there uh, that I'm, I'm already using. And the best entry opportunities will be at that we're above the 50 period moving average. And right now, we are pretty good ways from that. So I want to wait and maybe down the road, we'll get another little uh, uh, bounce, some of that nature. I can take advantage of this bounce, is just too small for me to try to, to get involved there. So I'm just going to watch this one for now. The EWJ, this has been an interesting chart. We had the massive gap down here. We talked talked about that during that time period. I told you we'd be looking for a buy opportunity at that point because you were in an uptrend. 50 day moving averages here. Look for a nice hammer entry opportunity. Didn't get that, but if you took advantage of the pullback anyway, you made money to the upside. We warned you at that time that we would not attempt to short this, even though we were looking at other sell opportunities last week. We wouldn't do this one because the Bank of Japan came out with a $1.4 trillion. They're just investing, and they're actually directly investing into. Uh, stock ETFs and things like that. So this is just not something you could sell. However, I would like to point out that they have a very substantial debt level already in Japan. Uh, and when you have global markets selling off, I find it hard to believe that this one uh, can stay elevated. So I'm not confident to uh, go buy this market as well. But again, um, it's a matter of timing. And so when once a trend changes and you start to see lower series of highs, lower series of lows, you can, you can think about your trade. Uh, taking a short position at that point right now. I just watch this one. 
The London Financial Times Index, again, this one was an early warning. We talked about this one before. We told you we were basically seeing here was a breaking down longer term charts. We showed you the long term charts on that. And then now we've got the, the short term charts from the high point here, low point here, lower high here, lower low here, lower high here. What do you think is coming next? Well, we don't have a hammer candlestick here. This is not a bottom. This is actually a lower low than you saw over here. So we know that we're taking out this low as well. You're going down here. Why are you doing that? Why is it that in Europe, you've got all these massive sell signals because they've been paying attention to something that you haven't. Looking now at the NASDAQ, this is another attempt of me calling the top here in the US markets. Um, again, that's a really tough thing to do to try to call an exact top. You can get another day to the upside, another two days to the upside, and you get stopped out. And then and basically this is going to crash, and so I'm, I'm just trying to anticipate that ahead of time. Do not be long at these markets, please. Um, this is, again, the most important. If I ever do a video that matters, this is it. Um, again, I want to point out that this one, you have a, a hanging man candlestick. You've got a previous uh, uh, move up to the top here above the upper Bollinger Band line. Uh, I can't tell you that, you know, that this should have been a uh, bearish diver, I'm not bearish, it should have, should have been a, a shooting star and it wasn't because the, the Fed came out and propped it up at the end of the day. I can't tell you that because I can't prove it, but uh, it's what it looks like, what it feels like to me. Um, and all in all, I'm just uh, looking for an early entry opportunity on the short side of the, of the U.S. markets here. Uh, I may get stopped out on this one. It's one of the ones, like again, the U.S. markets are the toughest ones to call short here because they're the, really uh, the ones that are fighting the trend and continue to move to the upside. But what's going to break out and happen uh, is going to force these guys lower. And so that's important to know. You needed a catalyst to break this market down and start driving it much lower. And you have that catalyst. You just don't know it yet. Oil is always an interesting chart that looking at now at the XOI oil index. This one, of course, uh, whenever people feel that we see a strong economy, then you see uh, prices of oil um, getting uh, uh, a boost to the upside because people anticipate they're going to start using that oil as people uh, drive around to the malls and back and forth to work and so forth and so on. And you see you know, shipping and so forth and so on. Uh, in this particular case, we're not seeing that. We're seeing the chart actually breaking down. What do they know that you do not? They anticipate, they see uh, better than the equity market did. And also, you'll see that the uh, bond market is smarter than the equity market. But the main thing here is to point out that you're seeing the economy is being signaled here as going lower. So that's important. If the economy goes lower, what happens to equity prices? They also go lower. It should be noted on this particular chart, I'm already took, uh, last week was talking about this is where I would sell here, this bounce here, and then we come over here and rolled over again. It's, back down closing again below the two uh, the 50 day moving average again that's where I would be looking to uh, take another position on the sell side that's why I marked it with a blue arrow indicating that's what I would be seeing there again all you're seeing with this whole thing is just a rolling over uh, a peaking pattern if you will just kind of flatline for a while and now we're breaking down and that's it once that's peak then all your global markets are starting to do the exact same thing we've already shown you several from uh, Europe they're, they're breaking down we've shown you uh, Asia, which also breaking down, uh, and now the only thing you haven't seen is the U.S. markets, and they're coming. Looking now at the UUP, at the U.S. Bullish Dollar Index Fund, this one I'm bearish on, longer term chart indicates we should have to pull back here. I uh, attempted the, the short uh, on that one way back when, and we're here, and then we got stopped out. It's just kind of rolled over instead of just uh, uh, completely doing as I expected and just pulling back more sharper. Uh, so we got stopped out of this, and at this point in time, I'll just leave it alone. The Russell 2000 small cap index, this one we talked about yesterday, I told you we had a very clearly defined shooting star signal here. And if I got confirmation the following day, meaning lower high than the previous day and lower low, which we got perfectly, uh, I would start selling that. Even if it was only by one penny, I would start selling that. So you've got that today. No reason to do anything with this other than sell. Remember, again, you're going down here 851. Okay, that's going to be where you you see the 50 day moving average cross below the 200 day moving average because you're going to a bear market. That's where you're going to go just before you ever start getting into massive nasty selling. So uh, you are way, way overbought here. I'm not going to have time in this uh, video to go over the long term chart here. I've already done that earlier. But again, the long term and the short term charts, my charts with my annotations are kept on the free website at perfectstockalert.com. So anything that you want to know on the long term chart, you can just go there. It's already broken down the uptrend line. Now all you're seeing is this guy rolling over high point, low point, a high point, low point. Lower high, what comes next? Lower low. You're taking this level out right here. Looking now at the S&P 500 large cap index. Again, this is the one in the U.S. markets that are fighting the trend and moving to the upside here. Uh, you, nice uh, 
sell signal again here and you can continue to press to the upside so I haven't taken a short position here uh, at this time I'm just keeping an eye on it when we start to break down I will definitely take a new entry opportunity on there I tend to do it back here uh, and it got stopped out so I'm a little skittish of doing that again I'm just going to wait and see when we start to break down then I'll take another uh, shot at it again trading well above the 50 day moving average and like I've been saying all the charts of Europe and all the charts of Asia uh, as well as uh, you look at gold you look at silver you look at uh, oil they're all telling you bear market and the U.S. is fighting it, saying, no, no, we're fine, we're fine. But again, look at the earnings, like I talked about earlier last week. Whenever you see the earnings number, don't be paying so much to the earnings number. Look at the revenue number. The revenue number tells you the same thing. Bears market, we're starting to pull back in our economy. Everything is telling you the same thing, except for the news and the dumb traders who are telling you, no, just buy, it's fine. Everybody's going to make a nice uh, orderly exit on May. They're gonna, the Fed's going to come out and say, okay, everybody, please line up. And I know sell individually, it's going to be working just fine like that. It's not going to happen like that. You should all be looking at your charts whenever you're looking at your prices that you're at right now or where you're entering uh, and compare your current price to the 200 day moving average. In this particular case, you're looking at a 10% correction roughly um, before you even get into the bear market territory. And again, we're going into a bear market. So the reality is uh, that's just free money. And then the rest of it we made to the downside again. And again, I will show you why in a moment. Silver looks a great deal like gold. Nothing here to uh, take advantage of on my, uh, my end here. Uh, we've been well away from the 50-day 50, 50 moving average. And you'll notice this chart is much more developed than we're seeing in the U.S. markets and even more than we're seeing in, the, in a lot of the European markets. Um, but this is where everybody's headed. You're going to see the bearish cross. You're going to see this little 50-day uh, moving average cross below the 200-day moving average. And then any price activity that you had above that 200, the 50-day moving average uh, or even the 200-day moving is going to look like something that, oh, man, I should have took that as a great sell opportunity. I should, why did I hang on to that? And that's what you're looking at right now in the U.S. markets is you're trading well above the 50-day moving average, pretending like this market just continues to rally forever. And, and in fact, it's uh, blowing up in your face and you don't even know. The TSX or the Toronto Stock Exchange. Anyone can look at this chart and see what happened. Same overall thing. You had a nice rally going on. And then we hit a top and we started to break down here. We came down bouncing still off the 50 day moving average. The hammer candlestick formations here bounce up here, testing a previous high, and we get stopped. You get a double top. You start to roll over again. And that's this time we close below the 50 day moving average and we come up here, find resistance at it, and then we break down to the 200 day moving average. Now, in a situation where you have just a correction and we're going to go back into a nice bullish market, well, what happened here is you'd come down here, find strong support, immediately rally back up here, and then we'd be playing up here, say, okay, it's tighten up, consolidate, and then we bounce up here and we come up again. That's not what happened. We come up here, we clean that up again. We came up off the 200-day moving average, and we rolled over. Now we got lower highs, lower lows, and a massive sell signal at or above the 200-day moving average. You are going so much lower. It's not even funny. Looking at the 50-day moving average, what happens? She's continuing to move this direction, and then she starts to roll over. What's going to happen? The 50 is going to cross below the 200-day moving average. And again, you will be looking at these prices as a gift that you wish you had sold at or whatever. But uh, she's going much lower. Now, why do I keep saying that you don't even know that you can't see it? I'm, I'm sure a few of you guys, outliers out there, already know uh, what I'm talking about. But uh, when you look at the VIX, and the VIX is the volatility index, it runs the inverse of the S&P 500. Whenever um, traders get out there, hedge funds, this and that, and they get concerned with the markets, you will see that they, the VIX will run very bullish. You'll see a lot. So last time we had some fear in the market and we had this going on because people were loading up on the options to protect their, their uh, long positions in the market. And then when that fear subsides and we see that you know, we're not going to go over the cliff or whatever, then we, we calm down. Okay, And that's how the markets uh, trade inversely to the VIX. And so when you're looking at the VIX right now, you can see that there was a little bit of concern and then we're like, no, we didn't get any pullback and we're just going to continue to rally to the upside and everybody just calmed down again. And then something happened yesterday that, again, is not really in the news all that much and no one's paying any mind. You can see that indicated by this chart here. I'm not long the VIX. I'm not short of the S&P. But as soon as I get a clear signal, of either a hammer on the VIX or a shooting star on the S&P, I will then take a short position on the S&P or a long position on the VIX, anticipating the VIX will rally up here, filling this gap that you have here, and then the S&P 500 will be going much lower. So keep an eye on this as an opportunity in the future. Looking now at the EMW, the Wilshire 4500, this is the last chart we'll be looking at before I show you why you're going into a bear market. 
this chart here, we took a short position here and we saw the markets breaking down uh, and we thought this was a good entry up and call into the top. And said so we got a bounce that took us up above our stop loss limit that was here, marked the blue line on the chart there. And then what did we get? We told you when this happened, that even before it happened, that if you ran up here, all you were going to form was a bearish divergence and it wasn't going to be sustainable. It was going to crash anyway. You could tell that from the high point here on the ultimate oscillator, lower high here. It's trending down. Same time period, you can see high close here higher close here. It doesn't matter that it's going up. It's a bearish divergence telling you that it's unsustainable. It's frothy. It's just going to fall apart. Now we have, as of Thursday, another shooting star signal, which is actually a clearer signal than we had over here. So now we can see a shooting star signal followed by a hanging man candlestick formation, both sell signals. And I'm taking this as a sell because it's confirmation on the previous day with the lower series of highs, lower series of lows. It's a short opportunity. Tight stop set right here. And we'll keep an eye on this. Look for this to start closing below the 50 day moving average. At that point in time, the 50 day moving average start going flat and then you'll start to see it rolling over. The 50 will then be moving in the direction as uh, the rest of the markets you're seeing uh, will be moving to go trading below the 200 day moving average. 200 day moving average is 728. So you've what, 815, you've got a long way to go before you can get into bear market territory. And let me show you why I believe you are going into a bear market. Okay, well here we are looking at the Yahoo Finance page and you can see that we have the big and most important news of the day thus far is Wall Street ends down, but index is gained for the week. Only thing you're looking at right now in the US is price activity. Price goes up, we believe that it somehow uh, reinforces the fact that it should go up. And so we all buy and everything's happy. What's the following news? The stock slip as bank earnings uh, are beginning and as bank earnings begin and consumer data disappoints. Consumer data and is disappointing because your economy is contracting again. Uh, the bank earnings uh, have begun, but again, I told you, uh, don't pay attention to the earnings, pay attention to the revenue, the, the total amount of money that they have bringing in, the top line on the income statement. That'll tell you whether or not you have an expansion in the housing market, are people are they making new loans or are they you know, uh, seeing uh, less. And in fact, they're seeing less. Uh, when you look at the um, data following it, the plunge on the weak revenue, okay, that's important. Revenue, that's what we keep telling you. That's the number that is most important. And when that's getting hit, then you're going to start to see the, the uh, contraction being reflected in every piece of data that you would look at. Now, again, this isn't the information that I think is important, the, the reason why I'm calling a bear market. None of this is why. Uh, this is just more signs that, that you should be noting that are confirming what I'm about to show you. Okay, early, early, early in the morning. Uh, today, actually way early in the morning while you guys are still sleeping, this piece of news came out. The Eurozone crisis is back on multiple fronts. Uh, and that's what I've been waiting for. I mean, I needed a catalyst to take us much lower. And this is it. And the reason why it's it is from the same reason that you, uh, if you traded back in the 2008 time period, uh, you're familiar with the, the uh, Bear Stearns situation. We had the, you know, Bear Stearns had a 25 billion uh, market cap way back when, and then for a while it started to have problems, and one thing led to another, and the market continued to go up, ignoring the fact that it, uh, there was a problem. And then within 72 hours, poof, it was gone. It was no longer Bear Stearns. Uh, and then the market took notice of that. Wait, 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 that, that's, that's kind of odd. And the market went up right after that. It was completely oblivious to what had just happened. Uh, and then it started to spread. And that's where the problem uh, first showed itself. When people started realizing, wait a minute, this can spread. Once that fear hits the market and they realize, wait, it not only could spread, but it is spreading. Then we had the crash and then so forth and so on. And that was on a very small scale. You were looking at individual companies. Okay, when you're looking at uh, bad companies, uh, subprime companies, uh, that's really poor. Uh, but when you look at subprime countries, that's a, a level you've not even fathomed yet. Uh, so that's something I want you to think about. When I'm looking at the market saying, how low can we go? I'm starting with, okay, the 2009 low, and that's going to be tested. Uh, so that's where I'm looking at how bearish this market really is now. Why does this piece of news matter? Because it's the same way it played out with the Bear Stearns and the Lehman Brothers thing. It's just happening in countries here. We had the Greece issue and everybody stepped up and said, oh, we, we can contain this. Now. And then we started hearing words such as contagion fears. What are they saying? Well, they're saying we don't want the fire and you know, the, that, that problem to spread. If it spreads, we're in trouble. Uh, we can't actually sustain everybody, but we can, we can help this little one out, calm him down and, and keep everybody happy and, and going for a while. Well, this just happened and the, the Eurozone crisis is not only back, but it's on multiple fronts, which means what? It means it has spread. And now all the ones that they've been trying to keep under control are all lit up again. You have uh, Portugal, you have uh, Ireland, you have, uh, you can read the article. I posted it on the Facebook page on PurposeLocular.com. I've also posted it on uh, 
the website at perfectstockler.com. And so that, I, I recommend that you do read it. But the most important part of it is that it has spread, and that's important because it is showing they can't contain it. And if they can't contain it, then in fact it blows up in their face, and we see a, a massive market crash. And that's why right now you should be most concerned with the market. And I know nobody is, but you're going to thank me for this uh, later. If you've not been to the free website at perfectstockalert.com, it's right there. It's 100% free and all we ask in return. Please refer a friend. Also, if you're looking for my charts like I talked about in the video, I told you that you can actually go see my personal charts with my annotations and my stop loss limits, so forth and so on. Under the market section, nightly market analysis videos, just below that, market charts. Those are my charts, both long term and short term. You can check them out and I've put a whole bunch of sales on there. I don't actually have a buy uh, it that I would buy anything in this market right now. So again, uh, I really, really ask that everybody take the time to watch this video. Thank you guys for doing that. And then share this video because there's a lot of people that's about to get hurt. Please take a moment to review our disclaimer. The information provided herein is our opinion only. Under no circumstances do any statements here represent a recommendation to buy or sell securities or make any kind of an investment. You are responsible for your own due diligence. To summarize, we do not provide investment advice nor do we make any claims or promises that any information here will lead to a profit loss or any other result. These videos are for educational purposes only.